welcome to the Eye Doctor Eye Care White Cataract Series of the Melbourne Innocent Cataract where we go through and show some different techniques of uh, cataract surgery in a male with a brunescent cataract. And today we're going to be showing you the FACO stop and chop technique. So as we make the parents head in thesis, when the challenges with a brunescent white cataract are obviously a poor red reflex. There's a high risk of complications with AC rent or an Argentinian flag, high risk of wound burn, damaging the cornea and therefore causing endothelial dysfunction, and obviously the high risk of PCT and variability in refractive outcome, and that's what we're trying to avoid here. As you can see, we're injecting the vision blue dye to stain the anterior capsule. And what we're going to do now is wash out that dye with a BSS solution. And that anterior capsule staining is going to make it just easier to see when we go and remove the cataract as we, as we perform surgery. Then we're going to inject a viscoelastic, so it's a high molecular weight viscoelastic, such as a Helon 5, to form the anterior chamber. What this does is flattens the anterior capsule so that it's easy to work with. Now we're going to make the main wound incision and after that we're going to insert a 27 gauge needle to decompress the lens. Now this is going to be important because it's going to avoid any uncontrolled AC rent which can lead to the complication that we mentioned before with the Argentinian flag sign. So once the main wound's been created, again, as I mentioned, we insert the 27 gauge needle to decompress the lens. Once that decompression has occurred, we then fashion a needle systome to create a continuous curvilinear capture axis. You'll see this the capture axis formation happening now. The goal is to get the axis to be big enough but not too big that it's at a risk of running out. So the ideal diameter would be about 5.5 millimeters. And you can see the vision blue dye makes this a lot easier to see. And we just use the forceps at the end just to finish the, the axis off. Then using the FACO emulsifier we use the FACO tip to create a groove in the center by using the sculpting mode. And as you can see, as that groove is being made, it's an incredibly white cataract that we're operating on. So once we make that groove in the center, we can rotate it by 180 degrees to make that groove even deeper and to lengthen it. And as we do that, we then have the ability to be able to split the nucleus in half. So then we do the chopping technique. So using a second instrument, the chopper, we split the halves into quarters, and then we're able to FACO emulsify the cataract, which is using ultrasound to break up the cataract, and then it suctioned away. Now in between doing this, we top up the viscoelastic to protect the endothelium. But because the probe kept getting included due to the dense cataract, we also had to clear the tip externally, removing the probe just with a bottle of BSS. The halfway mark of FACO, the cataract was very adherent to the capsular bag. We had to use viscoelastic to push and dissect it away so it was safely we were able to FACO and FACO chop it again. So even though this took a long time, all we require is patience, do it slowly and safely, and we were able to manage to take it all out. And obviously, because of the time, we, are able to, we had to top it off with a bit more local um, lignocan anesthesia just to make the patient more comfortable. So once the nucleus and the epinucleus are out, we then use irrigation aspiration with bimanual probes. And then we inflate the AC with a viscoelastic agent again. And once that's within the AC, we then decide to use a blue filter yellow intraocular lens and insert that into the capsular bag. Now 
as you can see the lens is now sitting within the capsular bag and is slowly opening up to rest in place. Well, it takes a little bit of time and manipulation to get the lens in the right place. Again, patience and just a bit of time means that you'll be able to sort it out quite easily for the patient so that their vision is as good as it can be after the surgery. Now, coming to the end of the procedure now, what we use is more BSS or balanced salt solution to just go around and to seal all the wounds. And we check the wounds with a sponge for any leaks at the end. And then right at the end of the procedure, we inject with a subconjunctival KFSO antibiotic and dexamethasone steroid. And that's our case presentation of a white brunescent cataract. We hope you enjoyed it. This was performed by our director and co-founder, Dr. Hong and is solely just for teaching purposes and interests. Thank you.